Hey guys, it's Nicole and I'm back with another card process video, this one using some watercoloring and lawn fawn inks. So right here I have some Tim Holtz watercolor paper uh, just attached down to a clipboard so it doesn't warp too much. And I'm using this cheap watercolor set that I had gotten with a 40% off coupon from Michaels. And I'm basically wanting the entire background to be shades of green and yellow. Um, and I'm kind of channeling all of my color in the center. I don't want it to go all the way to the edges. And I'm gonna do several layers of this. So we might fast forward through quite a lot of this. Um, but first I'm just laying down a base layer of greens and yellows and I'm using the most brightest uh, yellow in the palette. It's hard for me to tell you guys the names because I don't believe this this uh, watercoloring set has actual color names, but it's the brightest yellow and then the green that's most closest to like an emerald green. So I'm laying that down right now um, and then I've cut out a lot of the heat drying, uh, but I've heat dried between each layer that I've done. Okay, so now I'm going on to my second layer, and as I do that, I'm just going to kind of tell you where I came up with this background. I'm going to be using the Lawn Fawn uh, Chemistry or the Love Chemistry set um, that came out, I think, last year. And I wanted this to kind of look like two test tubes of two different colors kind of dumped onto the paper. And I want it to look very haphazard. Um, <clears throat> haphazard, but still like within a square that could focus on uh, the main images. So now I'm just, I think I've added um, one uh, green that's a shade darker just to kind of blend with the yellow and I'm heat setting that now and then I'm going to take a final look at it and just make sure that it's got the uh, deep colors that I want. I didn't want this to be like a whitewashed watercolor, I really wanted this to be a very bright and vibrant watercolor. So I'm just hitting that a final time and now I'm going to peel uh, all of the tape off and um, just make sure that the final product isn't too warped and set it aside while I work on the main images. So now I'm just going to trim this down. I decided I wanted it a little smaller. Um, I originally used the Tim Holtz watercolor paper at the size it comes in the package. And now I'm just trimming it off a little bit so that there'll be a border uh, later when I put my main card image on the backing of my card base. And now um, I wanted this to not warp at all and I wanted it to be dimensional so this is some white uh, fun foam and I'm going to cut it to be the entire span of the back of the card so that it makes the back of the card really sturdy for mailing. And I just got this fun foam I believe at Michael's. So I'm just cutting it down. They come in sheets there and I think you can get them for like 89 cents a sheet so I have a couple sheets on hand. Now I'm using the two different test tubes or the you know little lab bottles and I'm going to stamp them with memento ink and then color them in to be the main images on the front of the card. Typically I prefer uh, stamping first and then die cutting however when I'm filming I hate putting my uh, Sizzix machine on the table and then taking it off, my big shot, so I die cut them off camera, I prep before I do a video, and um, then I stamped it. And now I was just using my hexagon chart to kind of decide what colors I wanted these two test tubes. So obviously there's going to be a boy and a girl because this is a little love card, and so I'm doing uh, one of the test tubes in shades of pink and then um, the other one probably in some blues or turquoise colors. And I'm leaving a little bit of white space in between the two colors just to show like a little shine on the bottle uh, to make it look a little more dimensional, so you'll see that. And the top of the bottle without liquid in it, I do use a couple um, BG000 color and another color to just kind of add so that it just doesn't look stark white. Um, so you'll see me do that. Here. <clears throat> I think it's BG with the three O's and then BG with the two O's that I use on the top. Um, and I don't do anything special, I just kind of give it a little bit of a tone. Now I'm using uh, different BG colors. I think this is BG 13, 15, and 34. Um, but check my blog, I will make sure I have all of the proper supplies and colors listed for you uh, when this posts. And I'm doing the same thing, just you know, not going all the way to the center of the um, 
dye as I color so that I'm leaving a bit of a white space that kind of shows like a glare in the glass. That's it. Really simple and easy coloring. Nothing special. Uh, that's why I sped it up just a little bit. So there are the finished pieces. And now I'm taking my card base, which I really like the way that it turned out. I don't know. There's something about it that I just like. It looks very organic. And I'm stamping my sentiment in black VersaFine ink. And it says U plus me equals chemistry. And it's my uh, husband and I's anniversary on January 24th. So this is the card I was making for him for our anniversary. Now I'm just adding some dimensional adhesive because I want to put those uh, two little test tube bottles right below my sentiment. And I'm cutting smaller pieces um, to go on the tops of those. Okay, so this is a Blueprints, MFT Blueprints uh, die set and it comes with just a straight stitch um, that you can make borders around your paper and I wanted to have haphazard borders all around. So. Um, I might be adding two borders on the top, but each kind of leaning in different directions, which you can see me doing here. I just like that this card is supposed to be haphazard. It's supposed to have a spill on it. It's supposed to not be done perfectly. And so um, instead of having a perfect border that I would have gotten with the rectangle die, um, as you can see on here, I just made it all different types of borders at all different angles. And you'll see that in the final pictures. Now I have some silver metallic thread and I'm using it as a base to put my two um, test tube bottles on. Again, the look is supposed to be just chaotic and haphazard, not very clean. And so I thought this added a little bit of texture, but without, um, and it almost looks like wire in the background. So I like the way it came out. Now I'm taking my fun phone and some glossy accents and I'm adhering that to the back of my card. Just squeezing it all over. This is a very um, good adhesive. It, it won't budge once you've laid it down. So I'm pressing that pretty firmly, making sure I get all the edges, and then I'm putting a, a block on top just to kind of weight it down while I work on some of the other aspects of the card. Now my base is going to be some True Black PTI 120 pound cardstock, and I'm just scoring that in half. Um, I wanted that to kind of match the sentiment, the, the stark black of the sentiment. And I'm using a bone fo folder just to get a very good crease on it. And then I'm going to adhere uh, the inside of my card, which is just some uh, plain white paper cut with the rectangular stitch die. I use that on almost every card. I use um, something to make a nice, clean base in the middle that I can write my sentiment on. And then again, I'm using glossy accents to put on the um, fun foam to adhere it because I think it's just very sturdy and it'll stay. And I have a nice, pretty thick black border around the edges, which is what I was looking for. And then you can't see here, I think I did it off camera, but I decided to stamp faces on it. I forgot that I wanted, oh, here I'm putting um, some clear Wink of Stella, just add a little sparkle and to match the silver thread. But you'll see in the finished product that I put smiley faces on the card. So I hope you guys enjoyed and take a look at the finished product here.